Good morning, Enid. It is Thursday, October 6th. Time to get your motor running. Do you remember that song? I think it was by John Kay and Steppenwolf, you know? I think, I, th I think we can kind of hear it in the background. It kind of dates me a little bit, but I remember as a kid being in the driveway shooting baskets to this song. Well, anyway, it's time to get your motor running. We're glad that you're with us. I'm Steve Keim. Grab a cup of coffee. And thank you, Jennifer, for being here Absolutely. Today. I'm Jennifer Kissling. Good morning, Nina. It's time to rise and shine. Good morning, Nina. Thank you for joining us. Jennifer, thank you for being with us. Absolutely. Thanks for it. asking me. Miss Loaves and Fishes. Because <laughs> you, you're kind of the volunteer coordinator. I know you've got this title. I, they keep changing my title a little okay. bit. Yes, I'm a volunteer, but I'm also board president right now. And, okay. and I do a little bit of everything, marketing, everything that needs done around there. We all chip in. Yeah. You have a big event coming up on Sunday. We'll talk about that yep. uh, throughout the show today. But thank you for helping me co-host today. You bet. I appreciate I understand it. understand you had a busy week. You were in Tulsa. Yes. Your daughter, State Fair of Tulsa. State Fair. We showed sheep. Okay. We did pretty well. We were one away from making the big sale this evening. Oh. So she had to go to school today. Yeah. <laughs> school. Man, school gets in the way I sometimes. I know. I know. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. It's 732, holding steady at 71 degrees under a mostly cloudy skies. Yes, it rained, it thundered, and lightning all night long, and there's water standing everywhere. So on the road that I was on this morning, there was quite a bit of water, so be careful as you're driving this morning. We may think we know where the road is, but when it's underwater, that may not be the case, so be careful. Definitely. High today is going to be 86 degrees. And uh, Jennifer, let's look at the temps across the state. In case anybody's traveling today, they can go all the way down to Rock Island. Is that it? Mm -hmm. mm, never been there. In the southeastern part of the state, it's going to be... Right now, it's 64. Three Sands, we know where that's at. 68 degrees, so uh, Blair, Oklahoma, down in the southwest part of the state, down by Altus, is 73. So those are kind of our statewide temperatures. You have any big plans for the, the weekend? Because we've got the three-day forecast coming up. And we do, yeah. We have football all weekend long, Friday you know, night, Saturday night. We're going to have some Friday night lights up here in just a moment, but before the three-day uh, weekend, let's see what the weather looks like. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Oh, man, look. look <laughs> Finally, some fall temps. 68 on Friday. That's amazing. And sa Saturday, you know, I'll be cheering on my pokes. I know you'll be. Who? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, that other team. That other yeah. team, yeah. yes. Yeah. So okay. it'll be beautiful. Well, you guys played well last week when you beat Texas. So I, I really, we'll I, I was it. watching we'll the game it. and I was, I was rooting for it. So that's, that's, that's great. I want to say hi to my World War II buddy. George Bellman. Saw George yesterday, and he's a big fan of Good Morning Enid. And George, we appreciate your service. He's 93, I believe. And George, we just appreciate you watching the show. Uh, we thank the world of you, and we want to wish you an early Happy Veterans Day coming up in uh, November. But I wanted to say hi to George. He's just a big he fan. He's around great for 93. He, he does. <laughs> You'd never know. So we're, we're a big fan of George. So we just want to say hi to him. Okay, it's 734. And again, if you're planning today, the high today is going to be 86. However, there's a 60% chance of showers today, so keep that in mind as all the kids are going off to school. We'll have some football games here in just a few moments, and we'll have some lunch menus. But right now, let's uh, get ready. And besides the thunder, lightning, <laughs> and it the hailed. rain, Did and you get hail? yeah, we got hail. I kept hearing a little bit of pinging on the house, yeah. if you will. And uh, I don't know the size. Was it was it I this golf ball size look. stuff? Uh, I was <laughs> but anyway, to, to find out what happened overnight in the news, it's time for the Oklahoma Minute and Derek Silas. In national news, 
creepy clowns have dominated news headlines over the last few months. However, clown costume sales are up 300% despite the fear. In state news, the state Senate Education Committee held an interim study yesterday to discuss sexual abuse in Oklahoma schools to examine how predators are getting hired and the impact of Senate Bill 711. In local news, Tuesday, the city commission approved the rezoning of the former Harrison Elementary School property for affordable senior housing. Woodco plans to renovate the building and include one- and two-bedroom units for seniors aged 62 and older. The Tulsa State Fair continued this week at 4145 East 21st Street in Tulsa. Go out there and have a good time. Last night, Thunder wins 92-89 to against Barcelona in Spain. And in sports tomorrow... Tulsa University will play Southern Methodist University at 7 p.m. in Tulsa. And in sports this Saturday, OSU will play Iowa State in Stillwater at 2.30 p.m. And OU will play the Texas Longhorns in Dallas at 11 a.m. And on this day in history, in 1847, Jane Eyre is published by Smith, Elder, and Company. The book was an immediate success about the struggles of an orphan girl who grows up to become a governess. In 1866, Reno Gang carries out the first robbery of a moving train in the United States, making off with $10,000 from, from Ohio and Mississippi train in Jackson County, Indiana. And in 1926, Babe Ruth sets a World Series record. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to you, Steve and Jennifer. Who says this is not a informational show? I know. Golly, you got sports, you got... Uh, History. Ba got bank robber stuff. And clowns. <laughs> and clowns. <laughs> it's, it's just amazing. You just kind of want to shake your head saying, we, we've gotten to this point that you can't be a clown anymore. Now, yeah, I yeah. had to send, my son's a freshman at OSU, and I had to send him a text and do not, I repeat, do not dress up like a clown. Yeah. Because you know they think that's probably funny, but no. Somebody's uh, going to get hurt. Yeah, <laughs> something's changed. Good morning, Nina. Thanks again for joining us for our fastest 30 minutes of the morning, and I know it is for you as you're getting ready for the day. Um, again, weather-wise today, uh, there's a good chance of showers, 60% chance of showers, and for our friends out at Vance, we want to say good morning to you as well. Our winds are out of the southeast at 13. In case you're wondering which direction here in the windy part of Oklahoma, our winds are from the south, southeast at 13 right now, but high today around 86. Well, we'd like to remind you, if you have birthdays, uh, any special events, uh, fall, you went to the pumpkin patch, you took your grandkids, you took your kids, you took your dogs somewhere. You can send them to our cows. There are Holstein's at GME at Ena. Do you have Holstein's? We don't. We don't. Okay. All right. Just the sheep and probably a few other things. Yeah, we do. Yeah, okay. A little farm, but no animal, no cows. And I, and I know you have a new family addition because you, you, uh, adopted. We did. From the city council meeting, you adopted one of the pets. One of the puppies. Oh, well, good we for did. you. She's great. Congratulations, Brent, for being a new father there. Her name's Nutmeg. <laughs> She's adorable. <laughs> well, that's great. But send us at gme at enid.org uh, and let us know. Uh, Jennifer, you have a big event with loads of fishes on Sunday. Tell us about what is a fundraiser. Tell no, us, no, tell actually, us. it's it's our citywide food drive. Okay. And um, this has been going on for years across Enid. Ever since I was little, I remember it. Horn of Plenty used to do it, and they gifted it to us. Um, last year okay. and so it will begin this Sunday please have your food on your porches by noon um, groups will come around and pick that food up at 1 p.m. and um, bring it back to loaves and fishes where we'll sort it and restock our shelves and this is so important right now because our supply is low um, the summer hit us hard um, we typically see about 820 families every month but in the month of August 965 families came through our doors you needing that food assistance. You don't Incredible. think of that in Enid. You don't Incredible. think of hunger in Enid, but it's so, um, it's such a big part of some people's lives, and we're just happy that we can be there to help fill that gap and meet that need. Well, uh, here at the Enid Television Network, we feel like uh, it's, it's important for us as, as to give back to the community to highlight events like this and other nonprofits, the things they do through the year. So we'll have that information on the screen throughout uh, Channel 11 and Channel 12 to remind everybody to get their, uh, their food out for this weekend. Well, again, it's 739. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we have a new addition to uh, the, the show, a uh, young lady that's with us today, Heather Hughes, has just joined Enid recently, moved into Enid. And uh, Heather's going to be kind of updating us on what some of the events that are taking place. So right now at 739, we'd like to in, uh, introduce Heather Hughes to you. Heather, are you awake? Yes. 
Good, Good morning. morning, Enid, and thank you for having me here today. Um, there's lots of fun events going on in Enid um, that you'll definitely want to check out. Um, tickets are now available for Jay Owen House, the authentic illusionist and escape artist. Um, that's going to be at the CNB Center Saturday, November 5th at 7.30 p.m. Um, and also in November, there's going to be the Bull Riding Inc. Um, that's going to be November 18th and 19th. Um, and they're also going to have the Mutton Bust in. Um, so if you have any little kids that are wanting to ride the sheep, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, then lastly, the Harlem Globetrotters are coming um, back to the CNB Center this year. Um, so be sure to come out for that on February 2nd. Um, and thank you so much. Back to you, Steve. Very good, Heather. Great job. And as you can tell, Enid, a lot of events taking place. You don't have to go to Tulsa, Wichita, or Oklahoma City anymore. It's coming right here. Right. So good job, Heather. We, we welcome you to be part of the team. And uh, uh, now you can, you can breathe a little easier on your own right now. <laughs> Okay, at 741, football, love football, football. Yeah, Chisholm. You got, you got a strong relationship with Chisholm I Schools, do, and I think I you're do. undefeated. You we are undefeated. My daughter is the manager, number one water giver <laughs> out there. Um, and so Derek's sons are in the band. We are representing this morning. So on Friday Night Lights, let's take a look at our, uh, our games real quick. Dare Creek at Enid. Dare, uh, my wife and I went to the Choctaw Enid game in Choctaw Friday night. It was a great win. For Enid, my school Perry's on the road to Hennessy, and of course, as uh, Jennifer just said, Chisholm's at Alba. We encourage Gosh, you to, gold bugs. yeah, Alba Gold Bugs. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's Friday Night Lights. Okay, enough of that. We got to move on. Doesn't it go so quick? I know. It just zooms along. <laughs> we have a special guest to get your motor running. It's coffee and cars, cars and coffee, whatever. It's a topic of interest to me because I love to drink coffee, <laughs> and I love old cars. So enough of us. Enough of me. Uh, it's time for One on One with Jamara. Welcome to One on One with Jamara. Our guest this morning is Lieutenant Colonel Eric Castro, and he is the commander of the 71st Support Squadron Advanced Air Force Base. Did I say that correctly? Uh, almost, <laughs> Force Support Squadron. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you. He is here to talk to us about cars and coffee. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting topic. I love coffee. I'm not so sure about cars. Mm -hmm. I know I need cars, right? But I love coffee. <laughs> um, uh, Colonel Castro, tell us a little bit about yourself. I understand you're a graduate from Virginia Tech. And um, how did you end up at Van Air Force Base? Uh, yes, so I did graduate from Virginia Tech, uh, December of 1997. Uh, bachelor of Science in Psychology. Mm -hmm. Also uh, got a minor in Leadership through the Virginia Tech Corps of Cadets there as well. Um, so I came to Vance as uh, my follow-on assignment uh, previous to my previous one, which was at the State Department working in the Arms Control Bureau there. Um, I was selected uh, to become a f uh, squadron commander. Um, so they went through the process. Uh, I was selected to, uh, t uh, take the command here at Vance, and I arrived in July of 2015. Wow, so you've been here a little over a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a year and a couple months now. Mm -hmm. Well, nice. Are you liking Enid? I do, yeah. Good. Yeah, absolutely. It's a nice change of pace from uh, the D.C. world and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, traffic is definitely better in D.C. <laughs> Cost yeah. of living is a lot nicer here. So, yeah, I like it. It's great for families. So. Well, great, great. Now, let's talk about coffee and cars. Mm -hmm. um, what is the main purpose of this event? So the bottom line is basically it's an event uh, to provide a venue for enthusiasts of all things motorized. It's called co uh, Cars and Coffee, but it's cars, bikes, trucks, specialty vehicles, anything basically with a motor or motors mm -hmm. and wheels. And um, so people can come together, you know, and kind of basically check out each other's rides and see what they got, you know, talk about, hey, what did you do to your car or your truck or your bike? And, oh, yeah, I got this going on or people tend to bring out uh, historic or vintage cars, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of um, muscle or classics, and then even the newer stuff, you know, um, like there's a big tuner scene, so people like to modify their cars, and people are interested in that, motorcycles, trucks, everything else. So and you got the specialty vehicles, like those trikes, the Can-Am type mm -hmm. of vehicles. So those are, those are always uh, topics of interest, and again, it's just a place for enthusiasts mm -hmm. to come together and have a good time and have some coffee. And have some coffee, very important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, is this the first time that an event of this like 
has been celebrated or uh, yes. ad ad uh, advanced? To, to my knowledge, yes. Uh -huh. um, and I say that because uh, one, we finally now have a coffee shop uh, at our base, which we've not had before. Um, and so, and as I understand, as I kind of pulled around through people that have been on base for a little while, they've, they've tried before, but it, it just for whatever reason hasn't happened. And so now that we have a coffee shop and there's a, um, a lot of different enthusiasts across the base, and we also invited the local community mm -hmm. uh, to some degree, um, yeah, we put, it, we put it together and it's gonna happen this Saturday. Very, so. very nice. Now, let's go to that. It's going to be happening this Saturday. What's the time? Is there a cost for this event? How can people access the base? Sure, sure. So it happens uh, the, this Saturday, 8 October. Mm -hmm. um, the event itself is from 0800, 8, 8, 8 in the morning, excuse me, to um, 1100, uh, 11 a.m. Um, there's no cost to this. Um, so there's no entry fee, no, um, no admission, no charge like that. Uh, as far as access to the base, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is an Air Force base and it's a federal and military installation. So access is restricted, of course. Um, when we put out the invites to, you know, to different areas and different people, mm -hmm. um, we ask them for their information ahead of time so that we can run the proper security checks and make sure everything's good to go. Um, and then if everything's fine, then you're free to come on base. You'll be put on an entry authorized list mm -hmm. and allowed to access the base. Now, uh, when you say ahead, how many hours do they have? Um, is there a limit of time? Can they call Friday or the same Saturday? Um, typically, no. I, I would say typically, no. Okay. I mean, there might be exceptions, of course, but we try to ask for at least 72 hours in advance. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so as of this morning, we're right at that time, pretty much, um, to, to try to get your name and, and information. Because our, our folks, they need a little bit of time to to do their processes and get through that. And if there are any issues that pop up, have some time to try to resolve those. Okay. So. And when they call the, uh, the event uh, coordinator or mm -hmm. uh, your contact person, um, will she let them know what to bring and what not to bring? Because uh, you understand being a military installation, there are some restrictions and people may not be aware, um, arms or I'm not sure what Co other things are not permitted. Correct. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, typically, um, you don't want to bring things that you know you don't at a at a restricted area like a show, for example. You don't want to bring any firearms, things okay. like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, for the most part, you know, you can bring yourself. If you need to bring lawn chairs, some water, or something like that, mm -hmm. that's perfectly fine. So. Well, good. It sounds like a like a fun event and free of of cost free and of cost, yeah. another great opportunity to to get to know the. Advanced Air Force Base community. Absolutely, yes. It's you know part of the part of the reason we also extended it to um, some of the enthusiast communities out in the local community mm -hmm. is to you know kind of showcase Vance a little bit. Hey, you know we, we have a coffee shop on base, and, uh, and this is what we do. You know this is what our base looks like. Um, so yeah, come on out and have some fun. Just uh, before we go, can you tell us what you do when you're not thinking about coffee and cars? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the commander of one of the squadrons, or the mm -hmm. force support squadron commander. Um, and so my particular squadron does everything that touches people. Mm -hmm. um, everything that's HR, human, uh, human resources related to the base, um, all the way to what we call services activities, uh, things that affect the morale, welfare, and recreation. So for example, I have oversight of a lodging or a hotel operation, a club, uh, a daycare. Oh, wow. A teen and youth center, um, an education center. Uh, I have a flight called the Airmen and Family Readiness Flight, uh, and they take care of the family piece. You know, so if I have somebody that uh, from the base that deploys out, we look after the families. Um, if uh, families need assistance, we help them out. Financial management. We have grants and loans we can help them out with. Um, my tagline, basically, for the squadron right now is from diapers to deployments and everything in between. <laughs> we take care of that. Well, wonderful. Thank you for all you do, Colonel Castro, thank and you. thank you for visiting with us this morning. Yeah, thank you um, for having me. Again, this event is happening on Saturday, Cars and Coffee. So you can contact the number on the screen or uh, the email address on the screen. And again, the event is free of charge from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. October 8th, this Saturday. Thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching One on One with Jamara. Now let's go back to Steve and Jennifer. Jamara, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a real privilege for me to get to know Lieutenant Colonel Eric Castro uh, through the Honorary Commander Program is how I got introduced to this young man, and I appreciate his willingness to work with me because I have
kind of a hectic schedule. He's always invited me to a variety of events and stuff, and I'm saying, oh, I've got to be gone or I've got something going on. But uh, he's been really instrumental in introducing me to some key individuals at the base to really get a better understanding that there's a lot more going out there than these two jets that yeah, keep absolutely. flying all the time. And we just appreciate so, his service and all the men and women out on band. Absolutely. Everything they do for us. So anyway, um, thank you very much, Colonel. Appreciate your time today. Well, again, we're holding steady at 71 degrees today under a mostly cloudy sky. And, and again, the high today is going to be around 86. However, 60. 60% chance of showers, so keep that, keep that in mind yeah. as the kids are going off to school. Um, I think we just kind of went by the the menus. I don't know if we can backtrack a little bit and uh, go by the menus. You know, food is always on my mind. I'm always looking for my next meal. Jennifer, you don't know how much effort it takes to keep this weight up. I understand. You just it's don't know. Yeah. It, this frame, you have to the just physique. keep. Yeah, you just have to keep <laughs> it up. Anyway, as you can see, for Thursday, Jennifer, we're going to have fish sticks. Mmm, I'm going to school today. Macaroni and cheese. I don't know about the zucchini slices, but I'll be there for milk. How about Friday? Uh, turkey cheese sub, amazing. Oven potatoes. Mm. Man, apple slices. Those were my favorite yeah. in school. As Jed Clampett of the uh, Beverly Hillbillies would say, mmm, doggies. You know. Well, anyway. I wonder if they serve them in a Jethro Bowl. Probably. Do you the Jethro? Yeah. Jethro Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my wife keeps saying, the Jethro cereal bowl. There you see. go. All right. Let's talk loaves and fishes real quick before we go to the Oklahoma Minute. Um, if people are unable to help maybe this weekend for your, your food gathering event, what, what's the number they can call? And, and just how can people help? Because this is not just a holiday thing. It is not. It's a year-round. It is. You know, a lot of people think about it during the holidays, but it is year-round. The number to call is 580 580- Five four zero nine eight three zero, and we will put you in touch with our um, scheduler. We'll make sure we have a job that fits what you like to do, and that um, you're just having a great time while you're there. This week in particular, after the food drive, we're going to be closed to pantry, so we can sort the thousands and thousands of pounds of food that we anticipate that will come in. Yeah. So um, you can come down anytime that the pantry's open and help us sort that food. It's not something you need to be trained for. Uh, it can be a one-time event for you to come volunteer, get to know us a little bit, and I, I promise you'll be back because we're a really fun group to come and spend some time with. And I've been to the facility, and I'm impressed with the way it's organized, the refrigeration, the the, 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 the counters, the shelving, and all that. It, it's really impressive. So, again, that number is 540-9830. Good morning, Enid. It is 752. It's time for the Oklahoma Minute. In case you missed the news, and let's bring back the bow tie guy, Derek Silas. Tuesday, the City Commission approved the rezoning of the former Harrison Elementary School property for affordable senior housing. And the State Senate Education Committee held an interim study yesterday to discuss sexual abuse in Oklahoma schools to examine how predators are getting hired and the impact of Senate Bill 711. Creepy clowns have dominated news headlines over the last few months. However, clown costume sales are up 300% despite the fear. Last night, Thunder winds over Barcelona, 92 to 89. And Friday, Tulsa University will play Southern Methodist University at 7 p.m. in Tulsa. This Saturday, OSU will play Iowa State in Stillwater at 2.30 p.m. And OU will play the Texas Longhorns in Dallas at 11 a.m. And on this day in history, in 1847, Jane Eyre is published by Smith, Elder, and Company. The book was an immediate success about the struggles of an orphan girl who grows up to become a governess. In 1866, Reno Gang carries out the first robbery of a moving train in the United States, making off with $10,000 from an Ohio and Mississippi train in Jackson County, Indiana. And in 1926, Babe Root sets a World Series record, hitting three homers against the St. Louis Cardinals in the fourth game of the World Series. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to you, Steve and Jennifer. Very good. So what's next? I think we're doing birthdays <laughs> next, aren't we? Uh, not, not really. Oh. <laughs> uh, we got to move past the birthdays. But again, you can send us an email at gme at ena.org if you want to. to just send us uh, the kids in the pumpkin patch, whatever it is during this fall season. Okay, it's 7.54. we got to keep moving. Let's welcome Heather Hughes back to let us know what's going on in the Enu community for the weekend. Heather. Good morning, Enid. Thank you for having me. Um, tickets are now available for J. Owen House. That's going to be Saturday, November 5th at 7.30 p.m. Also in November um, is the Bull Riding Inc. That's going to be November 18th and 19th. And lastly, the Harlem Globetrotters, they are going to be coming back uh, to the CNB Center on February 2nd. And for a full list of events, you can visit cnbcenter.com. 
Thank you so much. Back to you, Steve. Very good, Heather, again. Thank you for being here today and helping us out. Okay, it's 7.55 and 249-4910 uh, is the number to call if you want to be like Jennifer and her family and adopt a pet. Absolutely. So we want to take a look at this pet promo and we'll be back right after this. like this are found and brought to Enid Animal Control every day. All of these animals are in need of good homes. Please consider adopting a dog or a cat from Enid Animal Shelter. Call us at 249-4910 or come down and see us at 1200 South Penn Street. Good morning, Enid. Thank you for staying with us on this Thursday, October 6th. Jennifer, October. Where was, where was the rest <laughs> of the month? I don't know if it's an older or an age thing, but, uh, you know, I remember when the year was 12 months long. Now I think it's closer think, to eight. Yeah. I just hope right. the fall temperatures follow the calendar. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's true. So, And again, we're holding steady at 71 degrees. One of our favorite times on Good Morning Enid is to provide an opportunity to uh, offer a pet to you. Yes. And we have this massive guard dog here <laughs> this morning, Jennifer. Who do, who do we have? This is Molly. Isn't she precious? She's a little <laughs> black and tan chihuahua mix. She's three or four months old. They're not real sure. Um, a little girl. She's very sweet and um, she does need to be spayed as most of the animals do down that come from the city um, shelter. And um, you all you have to do is go down and just love on her and find out if she's your perfect fit for your family. Um, pay that that rabies uh, bill and the spay or neutering bill, and she could be yours. Isn't she precious? I think she likes laps, it looks like. Absolutely, and I <laughs> want to compliment Robin Shepard. We appreciate Robin being here, getting up at dark 30 to bring a pet for us so we can find a home. But Robin uh, presented a pet Tuesday night at city council meeting, and she did a great job on television during the meeting, presented the, I forgot the dog's name. Jake. Jake. Jake was up for adoption, but anyway, Robin did a great job of doing that. And so, again, this is Molly and 249-4910. Uh, and I think uh, Molly would be good for a large family, small family. What do you think, Robin? A large family, yeah. I think so. What a, what a cutie. So. <laughs> she's precious. She's precious. Not quite as precious as my nutmeg, but she's pretty precious. And you found nutmeg as well at City Council. I did, Day, yes. So. Robin brought her in, and I fell in love. Very good. 249-4910 is the number to call this morning if you want to take Molly home. Molly, thanks for being here. <laughs> She's excited. Yeah, with all these lights and everything. 249-4910. Thank you, Robin. Appreciate your time this morning. Well, Jennifer, thank you for being here. You've been a great co-host. I hope you come back. Thanks and, so much for inviting you, me. I've you, had fun. You don't have to talk loaves and fishes, but uh, hopefully you will. I wear lots uh, of hats. I can talk just about anything. And, and the number to call. Somebody says, well, okay, I would really like to help in a significant way, loaves and fishes. Absolutely. What's the number? 580-540-9830. And again, have your food on your porch by noon on Sunday, and we'll have some groups come by and collect that food and, and get into the families that really need it the most. Okay. Well, Jennifer, thank you for being here. Welcome, Heather. Appreciate you being here. Lieutenant Colonel Eric Castro, thank you for being here. Get your motor running, cars and coffee, Saturday out at Vance. We got to go. Make it a great day. Good morning, Enid.